Hey y'all and welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach and we're in the garden. And today we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. So first off, welcome to all new subscribers that have joined the channel here in the recent past. Um, the barn chats are doing very well and it's gone, got us a lot of new folks that have joined us. I do hope that you stick around for more than just the barn chats because from there, that's where we talk about it. Here is where we show you how to do it because that's the most important thing to do. We can stay knowledgeable and understanding what's going on, but most importantly, we need to grow our own food. And this is where we're gonna help you do that. If you're just beginning, if you're experienced, there's always good tips and tricks to learn from one another, and this is where we're gonna do that. Today, we are gonna show you the garden. We have gotten everything planted, mostly, 99% planted. We're gonna talk about what we're growing, why we're growing it, and how you can preserve it. So here's our garden. It's a pretty good sized garden of raised bed gardening. A lot of herb boxes in the back. Um, we have some apple trees on the side. And then we also do a lot of container gardening as well. We're gonna show you different ways that you can do different things and how we like to do it and how we stay mostly successful being completely organic. First off, let's talk about that, organic. Organic's what you want it to be, okay? When you go to a store, there are so many different allowances on what they call organic when you buy it from a store. And then there's so many other rules if your farm is considered organic. It's all kinds of things. I'm gonna tell you what I mean when I say organic. What I mean is there is not one chemical, one pesticide, nothing sprayed on any of our plants. Organic though technically comes all the way down to the soil and to the wood and to the stuff around your farm. So if you're trying to become an organic farm, there's a lot more to it, like all the way to like if you're painting your uh, fence post. If it's a paint that is chemical based, you're no, you're no longer organic. So keep that in mind. This is a soft word and term that I'm using for our channel. Um, don't take that from like a grocery store. So what I mean is our soil is has all organic matter. Um, our wood has nothing on it um, that is chemical based and our plants are never sprayed with anything. But even our cattle panels and T-pose could technically take us out of the organic thing. I know, it's hard, it's difficult, but I do know my food is gonna be cleaner than anything I can buy at the store, and that's what I mean. Okay, so starting over here around the greenhouse, this is our salad bowl mix that uh, we've created out of our trash can. Our spinach has bolted, which it does, it goes quick. However, you can tell all of our nice leafy lettuce and our romaine lettuce, and we have some more over here, are all doing great. This is stuff that you can grow all year. It's food that you can put in your belly, and you keep cutting it, it keeps coming back, and it is so nice to grow your own lettuce. If you haven't done it yet, Make sure you do it. You can do this in any kind of container, sitting it on your balcony, wherever you want to. You can grow your lettuce. This is probably one of our favorite herbs to grow just for uh, eating. It is chocolate mint, and it tastes like, if you've ever been to Olive Garden, one of those little, uh, what do they call them? Y'all know what I'm talking about, those little mint chocolate chip things that they give you. That's exactly what this tastes like. It's so good. Remember, mint is very prolific. It's gonna spread. So if you don't have time to keep up on it, keep cutting it back, throw it in a container, and it'll stay with you. Over here on the side of our greenhouse that we built out of cattle panels is all of our flowers. So a lot of zinnias in the front. That's a big old um, hollyhock and it's the second year and I cannot wait to see it bloom. It's gonna be jet black. It's gonna be really pretty. Here at the end is sunflowers. That, we put them in the back because that won't shade all the other stuff and we just love growing sunflowers as well. They're very beautiful and very pretty. But even though flowers are very pretty, they have a very important job in your farm or your homestead. If you don't have bees that you're growing on your farm, having flowers is gonna bring all those different pollinators in to make sure that your vegetables are getting pollinated. So it's important to make sure that you're giving space for the beautiful flowers to help out your vegetables. Over here is our rebel gardening, I guess we can call it, with our peas and our onions side by side. But as you all can tell, we have peas everywhere and these are so delicious. They are going all over the place. We are actually taking these all the way to their peas because we want to can them. You could eat them as this state as like a, a snap pea and just eat them as a snack or however you want to, but we're actually gonna get them all the way to pea form and you can fill them when they're coming into their balls there. This one still has a little bit of time. We got about one there and one there. So do it however you want to, um, but peas are awesome to grow. If you can have success with them this year, it's going well and so are the onions. And the last time we were in the garden, you saw me put up our trellis for our tomato plants. The tomatoes are now planted. One thing that we do here is we make sure that we plant our marigolds with our tomatoes. That's gonna help keep your bugs off your tomato plants. It's one of those organic things that you can do with companion planting that helps keep pests down. So it's important to make sure that you have that knowledge and you're researching what can I plant with this plant to help maybe keep the pest off my tomatoes. And marigolds are a great one for that. 
we have all these tomatoes that are here you can see they're kind of alter alternated back and forth so we'll do a loose tie to kind of let them hang this way and that way not everybody's hanging on to the cattle panel they'll kind of hang off and then we have a lot of determinate tomatoes here so we're taking the route of letting them flow letting them grow let the suckers that come in the armpits just go not prune them off and see how our harvest comes this year this is about 60 tomato plants that we have and we should get a year's worth of tomatoes out of that one bed moving on to the next bed we have our ground cherries that are growing right here we have a couple green beans that i guess maybe dropped out of the seed packet over there our loofah gourds and then everything else in this bed that's not on the cattle panel are bush beans green beans green beans are in our top five that we grow every single year we eat a lot of them they've got they have a lot of good nutritional value and our family eats them like crazy so we plant a whole bunch of them and there's nothing more fun than sitting with your kids on the porch snapping green beans to get them ready for mama to start canning them it's awesome it's a fun thing it's like a summer staple around here so make sure to give plenty of room for your beans you can either grow them as a bush bean variety which is this and they just grow big or the pole bean variety which we have as well that allows you to grow vertically and it's a little bit easier to harvest with those so pick whichever works best for you and look mr loofah's already attaching soon that little bitty plant is going to take over all of this and it's going to be so pretty right here on this side of the second cattle panel look at there we got a weed that's attached to it yep i see you oh yeah that was satisfying <laughs> um, over here we have these are cucumbers so these are the pickling cucumbers they'll grow up you can plant them pretty tight because they'll stick to kind of their area to grow up um, but we have cucumbers on that side and then over here we have the kentucky wonder pole bean and so we uh, direct sowed them so they're not germinated up just yet we just did that a couple days ago but those two will pretty much meet in the middle they're not going to grow like the loofah to where just these cucumber plants are going to take over this whole thing so you're allowed to plant one thing over here and one thing over here and let them grow together on the cattle panel down here we have swan gourds so they're a picture of birdhouse gourd with a big long curtain neck like a swan would these are new to us this year it's the first time we're going to grow them so we're just interested to see how they do what they look like and if they could be something cool that we can do with the kids uh once we draw them out and then back here are our herb beds a lot of these are more annual herbs um and so y'all know we do a lot of different herbs these are a select few of them that we do and we alternate them each year after we've had big harvest um, from the previous year before so like this year we got chamomile marshmallow dill because we use so much of that in canning that's an important thing for us to grow comfrey thyme and then basil okay so peas and onions tomatoes green beans some cucumbers onto this bed we got some peppers in the back here um different varieties of bells and jalapenos right here we have a lot of okra that we're growing moving to the next spot right here we have some zucchini and squash that are growing reminder pole beans are going to be sitting right there and then the rest here we have more peppers that we're growing these are not in our top five for preserving but they are something we really do like to grow peppers we love having fresh peppers we love freeze drying or dehydrating and turning into seasoning but our uh, son specifically loves all peppers it's one of those things that we can just throw on his plate for breakfast lunch and dinner and he'll eat it fresh and so if that's something that he likes that's going to go really good into his body we're going to let him we're going to grow it and make sure that we have space for it okay then these two last beds that we have here you don't see a lot because a lot of it was direct sowed but it's a lot of watermelons it's a lot of uh, honeydew it's a lot of pumpkins it's a lot of butternut squash and spaghetti squash and winter squashes and all that stuff's in here and so basically what's going to happen is it's going to take over the two cattle panels that we have their vines are going to completely take over the beds and you most likely won't even be able to walk in the middle or over there because that's the way that we'll direct them out and we love it we like just giving it the space to take over and do what it wants and it's so fun to kind of go into what we call our melon patch and get you something really fresh to eat it's nice to have it's fun to have um, a lot of that's going to pack a lot of food because they're big pumpkins are great dewormers for us and for animals so it's something that can be pretty for the fall decor but then also it's food for your animals and stuff that you can preserve back for yourself um, because it is great to have those it, they're just so big right so you're gonna get a lot of food out of them um, and the different ways that you can have and there's all kinds of ways to uh, preserve them one of the coolest now is that we have the freeze dryer which is a nice way to be able to freeze dry and preserve these different melons but there's other ways that you can do it too always make sure that you have room for melons it's something that is a little bit more difficult to grow because you can get uh, quite a bit of bug pressure however if you can get it down and figure out a space to let it happen you'll never go back you'll have a lot of fun doing so hi kitty hello how are you 
and pretty Cali. And then over here in this jungle looking of a mess, we have our garlic. We have some more herbs over here, like lemon balm and some more mint, more comfrey. Here we have cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. And then over there will be our sweet potatoes as soon as we get those slits planted. That's about the only bed that's left. We also have the kids' beds down there that still need to be planted. Um, the kids and I and Jen will get out here this week and get those planted. We have a few leftover tomato plants that people that have been swinging by, we've just been giving them because we you know didn't have room for them so we want to make sure that they get planted and don't just sit here the whole time um and then we have some comfrey that we're uh, still giving away just to, for people to have um because we want to share what we have and make sure that people are trying to grow their own food so one thing with our gardening style that maybe is a little bit different is we try to go alternate years on different stuff that we're growing so basically what i'm saying is we try to grow enough in one year for two years worth of that vegetable instead of having a bunch of different stuff a bunch of different vegetables like you didn't hear me say anything about carrots you saw a very minimal amount of cucumbers you saw a very minimal amount of zucchini and squash that's because the previous year we grew a lot of that and so we still have plenty preserved back to get us through this year as well and into the next gardening season green beans however we're out so we're going heavy 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 on green beans to try to give us two years worth out of that one as well same with tomatoes that's the stuff that you know some years will lean back to just have enough for fresh eating and then we'll have years like this year where they get a dedicated 70 foot bed and we're going to grow a lot of food it's something that we like to do when you're growing in more of a smaller space because even though this is a big garden it's smaller to some it allows you to grow a whole lot of food so not confusing yourself by putting like four plants of that four plants of this four plants of that and then next thing you know you have a lot of food but you have a lot of different a lot of different food it's stuff that you're not really preserving back that's going to be the things that you grab every day it's going to be just a lot of fresh eating and so jen and i was like let's stop doing that let's start growing less varieties of vegetables each year so we can grow more of one to help us preserve back a lot of food it's stuff that you just have to play with. To us, it makes sense doing it that way. It might not make sense to all, but it's something if you're starting to notice every gardening season, you're having a lot of fresh food, but it just doesn't seem like enough to really get the canner out and start preserving. Try this method. Try growing less of different things and growing a lot of a few smaller things. And then I guarantee you your, your pantries will start looking a lot more full and a lot more prepped for you and your family to eat. So I started this video off with saying, putting our money where our mouth is because there's a lot of talk and we like to talk, right? As a country, we like to talk about stuff that's going on, but do we like doing stuff to help ourselves to where we don't worry so much about what's going on? You know, the different food shortages that we faced in the past year, the inflation prices, the just not being able to get your hands on anything kind of stuff. We like to discuss that stuff, but this is how you solve that problem right here. This is how you solve your problem at home so you don't have to worry about it as much as the rest of the world. So that's why we're always pushing to do one more thing. Let's start with what the problem is and let's figure out a solution to solve that for you, for us, and for our families. This is how you do it. So we can talk about it, we can have fun talking about it and relax and talking about it, but I wanna make sure that I see you all out here doing this stuff, growing your food. Because if you're not doing that, why are you even listening? Why are you even staying involved in what's going on? You gotta make sure that you're doing and you gotta make sure that you're changing every year to do one more thing, like I keep telling you, to grow more of your food. If you're going to the grocery store and you're looking at the spread on your table of the stuff that you bought, pick one thing that you can grow to stop having to buy it from the store. It's that simple. What is that one thing that's really costing me a lot of money and it really shouldn't be that I can take off this table and start growing in my, my garden to then preserve back myself? Besides the fact that you're gonna be saving a bunch of money, you're gonna be putting much healthier food into your body and keeping away all those different chemicals and hopefully keeping us away from having to go to the doctors, right? And that's our whole goal here. Everything natural, everything homegrown, and doing everything right here on your own homestead. And I know I'm reading it right now down in the comments as we speak. Zach, I'm in an apartment. I can't grow a whole lot of food. I am trying, but I, I can't get out and do as much as there is. I'm telling you right now, it's time to make changes. It is time to make changes to where you can start growing more of your own food. So if you are in the city or if you are in a subdivision that you can't grow this stuff because of HOA rules and different things, the guy's honest truth is maybe start looking into moving. You might need to just start looking into where you can get yourself into a place that is, it doesn't have to be this, uh, this established. You know, you don't have to start from scratch and have all the animals in the entire world, but you can have a piece of property that you can grow at least all the garden that you want to it's that easy. And it's just making your mind set to it to want to do that. 
because we do like to make a lot of excuses as the human race. We do like to say, well, I, I could, but I can't because of this. Well, it's time to start taking that out. It's time to start doing something and time to start changing for the better. So I understand circumstances. I understand people can't do it right this, right this minute. However, maybe you can start doing that, getting the things in the works now. So for the next gardening season, you can grow all the food that you want to. Maybe you can start changing. Maybe you can start putting yourself into a place to where you can do this. Because I know you can. It's just whether you want to do it or not. It's tough. It's long roads, it's hard roads. Jen and I have been through everything that I just said to do. Like I'm not, it isn't like we, this is a farm that was handed down or it was generational farms or stuff like that to where we had this. We were lived in a pole barn, we built ourselves. I worked full-time job every day of the week, came home, split wood till nine, 10 o'clock. Jim was homeschooling the kids, keeping the home fire burning while I was away. And then we would try to garden as much as we could. It was a grind to get to this point. And what I'm telling you is, Quit looking at the end goal. Quit looking at where you, where this is, where we are. You got to start with your own pace. You got to start with where your life is allowing you to go. But what I'm telling you all, the world isn't going to end this year. It isn't going to end in the end of gardening season. You got to start thinking, if I start now, in five years, I may be there. Right? In five years, I may have a garden this big. In five years, I may have a garden bigger than this because I'm putting my mind to it and I'm stepping into and saying one step at a time, I'm going to get better and I'm going to do more, more, more until then I can look back and relax and say, look how far we've come. Because I'm that proud of myself that look how far I've come, look how much food we're growing. This is so great. I'm feeling great about my insides. It all starts though right now with you stop making excuses and saying, we're gonna go, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna start taking the steps to get there. We're gonna start doing what we can right now to get to this point or better, hopefully better. You know, it's kind of like the ch our children, right? Here's the, what we did, go take that and go do more, right? Go do it, set your mind to it, make it a priority. Grow your own food, start doing it now. If you can't, start taking the steps to where you can, because I know you can. Can you tell them a little bit passionate about growing? I love it. I love gardening. I'm so happy that all these beds are now growing us food. I see a cat in there that I'm going to have to get out. They never come in here unless we're in there. So that, thankfully that's not too much of a worry. But hang on, she's digging. That is organic matter we do not want in our gardens. <laughs> Whew, gosh, dang on cats. Do great with rats, not great with gardens. But what I was saying is, um, I'm very passionate about gardening. I absolutely love it. I'm so happy that all these beds are growing food now. It's one of those things when you're sitting and waiting, you're like, man, those beds are just, they're ready to grow so much food in the winter and they're just sitting there doing nothing at this time. Um, but now everything is, it makes me really happy. I'm really excited. And I hope you're as excited as well for your own gardening. I hope you're starting to get things into the ground. At this point, most of our country is able to start planting. It's, you know, some of our top, top northern areas um, may still be a little risky for frost, but we're all getting there. Make sure to not compare each other to one another. Just make sure that we're leaning off ideas on things that are molding what we want to take into our own farms. That's very important to do. Don't compare yourself to others, but you can watch and grab some ideas to take to your farm. That's what it, the YouTube's here for. That's why we're doing this. It's a, not a replicate. It's a what do you like and what makes sense that maybe you want to try doing on your own homestead and farm. But other than that, y'all, I really enjoyed hanging out with you today. I enjoyed taking you through the gardens. Let me know down in the comments how your garden's doing. Is there anything that you're having struggles with, problems with, or also what are your successes? What are things that are starting out well this year that you're really excited about? Let us know. I love reading them. Love y'all. Until the next one. Bye.